Hey there, welcome to Solve My Math Homework. We're the YouTube channel that solves only the math problems our subscribers send in. So we got an Algebra 1 stats problem. It involves data, physics students are performing a lab and they roll a ball down the ramp and they record the distance rolled versus the time it spent rolling. And so they put all of this data into this table. Okay, so once you get a data problem like this, you're gonna be asked specific things. First, you'll be asked for the equation of the line of best fit. Okay, so we're just going to put that into our TI calculator. I'll do mine online, you'll do yours on a TI. Okay, you're gonna determine the correlation coefficient and round to the nearest hundredth. The correlation coefficient will be given to you with that line of best fit. What we're going to do, we're gonna put it into our TI-84 and we're gonna do the lin reg function. And you're going to get all of the values you need, including your correlation coefficient, which is your R value. Okay, and we'll talk about all of that. So then, next thing we're gonna do is using our same calculator, we're gonna get a, produce a scatter plot. So we're gonna put the scatter plot with the line of best fit into the calculator, we'll plot it, and then we'll sketch it for this assignment. And then we are gonna talk about residual points and actually residual plots and what they tell us about things. And they want us to actually do the residual for the point two five point six first, and we'll talk about what that means and what it shows and what the distance is. And then we will create a graph of the residuals because that's what we usually do. We don't usually look at just one point for the residual. We look at the plot of residuals. And then finally, we'll determine if a linear model is appropriate given everything we found out. All right, so let's get started. First, let's talk about linear regression. Line of best fits, it, it's simply when you take a bunch of data, data and you approximate it to a familiar function. In this case, the familiar function is y equals mx plus b. If you're in Algebra 1, you've been using linear equations all year, you're very comfortable with them. And so we're gonna take this data, put it into our TI, and we're gonna do a lin regression function, which basically says, take this data and find the closest equation of a line that best fits this data. Okay, then we're gonna look at our correlation coefficient. The correlation coefficient, remember that's our R value, I'll highlight it over here. Okay, that tells us how close we are, how good or appropriate the fit is. Anytime we have something that's close to positive or negative one, that's considered a strong co correlation. Remember, it could be positive or negative. You could have a strong negative correlation, okay? And then a weak correlation would be anything closer to zero, so we're gonna call it anything less than or equal to one half or negative one half. If R happens to be positive or negative one, that's a perfect correlation. And if it's zero, there is absolutely no relationship between the variables, okay? So let's get started. I'm going to put up the instructions. Remember, I'm not going to do the TI-84. I'm using a screen recording software. So I'm going to go through you're gonna hit the stat key, you're gonna go from that to the edit menu, and you're going to enter uh, your data right into the L1 data table, okay? So you'll, you'll put the table of points, there's nine points in, in all, and then you'll use the right out, uh, you'll hit stat again, you'll right arrow, hit calc, then go down to number four for the linear regression. And once you do all that, once you hit the linear regression and calculate and you hit enter, it's gonna give you a screen that looks like this. This is all of the information that you need to make your equation. Your A value, let me go back to my pen, this A value is going to be your slope, okay? And then the B is going to be your y-intercept. Remember, we're not using the R squared in this video. We're going to use your R value though. The R value is your correlation coefficient. So let's first just write the equation, okay? So the equation says y equals m x plus b and let's talk about what m and x are again m is going to be my a value okay and b is going to be the b value right here all right and when we plug all that in y equals i think they said go to the 10th so we're going to go to the 10th 5.63 that means it's 5.6 x my b value is negative so minus 3.3 because 295 it's going actually two nine rounds to 3.3. Okay, so this is my regression equation. And my R value of 0.959 says it's pretty strong. So my R value, my correlation coefficient is 0 0.959. So I think they said hundredths on this one, so 0 0.96. Okay, so now they wanted us to plot it. We can do that just from the same screen in our TI-84, we can go ahead and plot all of this data. 
Actually, you plot the linear regression, and it's going to take your data and the linear, linear regression equation line with it. All right, so let's look at this. Now, I obviously did this on a computer grapher and not on a TI, but your graph should look very, very similar, if not exactly the same to this. And I want to look at the data points because I don't love the linear regression. Look at the data. The data sort of curves like this. Okay, so we have a bunch of points above, a few points below. This line doesn't appear to be cutting it. So we are then going to start talking about residuals. Residuals will tell you, do I need a curve? Residuals ask you, should I have used a curved regression? Is a line really the most appropriate thing? So let's look at the definition here. Residuals and residual plots. Residuals for a point just show the vertical distance between what you actually got, what your actual data value is, and the, the regression line, your predicted value it's often called. Okay, and they, we use these to show if you should have used a curve, and it, maybe a line's not appropriate. Okay, so let's go back to our, our plot that was on that last screen. So it's a vertical distance. When you're talking about this residual distance, it's a vertical distance between what we actually got and what the line will predict for us. Because remember, that equation that we got, the y equals 5.6x minus 3.3, that's a linear equation that we'll use to predict future values. So if it's off, we don't want it. If it's not a good prediction, why are we using it? Okay, so they asked us to do the linear regression for the point 2, 5.6. Okay, so basically that says, all right, 2, 5.6, that's my actual data. What would happen with this predicted equation, right, this linear regression, what would happen at the point 2 if you use the equation? All right, we know what we actually got, so let's see what we would get with this. So everywhere we see an x, we're going to put a 2. That's okay, we only see 1x. 5.6 times 2 minus 3.3. Okay, so that's so far so good. That's going to be 11.2 minus 3.3, and that's going to be 7.9. So that means this guy here is our actual. Oh boy, actual, and our predicted is 7.9, not 7.5, 7.9 minus 5.6, which is 2.3. That's pretty far off. We really don't want high residual numbers because it's basically saying uh, your, your prediction is not so good, okay? So let's talk about residuals. One residual point is not really very helpful. We want to plot all of our residuals. So let's get rid of all this. Let's talk about what our residual plot would look like. There's our residual for that point. It's 2.3. It's the difference between the actual and the uh, predicted, right? So we did the residual for that point. But what we really care about when we're looking at residuals is do we have a pattern? If we see like a U-shaped pattern, right? Like say we see something like that we see an upside down u-shaped pattern if we see a pattern at all in our residual plot that means a curve was probably better and a line is not appropriate so we want to see no pattern if we want to know that the line was appropriate so basically here no pattern means linear is okay so when you plot your residuals you want to see something like all over the place no pattern in your residuals. That tells you that your line is okay. So I'm going to go ahead and show you my residual plot. Okay, let's look at what we're talking. Let's look at what I've got up on the screen. Those green points right there, those are the actual data points. Okay, the orange line is my line of regression or my regression equation line, my line of best fit, however you want to call it. And the blue dots are my residual plot. Look at the residual plot. So remember we said we wanted no pattern? Well, that sure looks like a pattern to me. So our residual plot tells us that guess what? Nope, linear is not appropriate. And how do we know it's not appropriate? Well, look at our residual plot. We got a U, okay? 
And so if you had to give a reason, which in this problem you do, you'd have to say the residuals, residual plot is U-shaped, okay? Showing us that we would be better off using curved regression. All right, so let's go back up to the top. Let's see if we got everything on this problem. We did the equation of best fit, the correlation coefficient, the R value. We produced a scatter plot. We sketched the scatter plot and the line of best fit right on it. We calculated the residual for the 0 .2, 5.6. Maybe I didn't put this down. So remember, this is going to be the actual minus the predicted or the difference between the two, okay? And then we graphed our residuals using the residual plot. I use desmos.com, you'll use your TI. By the way, when you do that on your TI, it's still in your list one, it saves your residuals for you. You'll go in there and plot your residuals. And we answered the question, is a linear model appropriate? This is why you don't just wanna go by the R value. Our R value is 0.96, but a linear model was not appropriate because our residual plot was U-shaped, telling us, guess what? You should have used a curve. All right, I hope this helped. Um, remember, I only solved this problem because a subscriber sent it in. So if you're not a subscriber, how come? Go ahead and subscribe today. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.